So here we go. We're beginning our our diving into the world of logarithms, and we're going to start just by graphing a basic graph of y equals ln x. Now, all of our logs for the first week that we are in this unit will be natural log of x. So I'll be natural logs. Does anyone know what the base is? E. It's like, don't even try me, Ms. Price. <laughs> that was really good. The base of the natural log is E. So all of the logarithms that we are going to be doing for the next week are all uh, base E. Okay? So when we write them, I'm going to graph it first. So if I graph y equals ln x, Pardon the interruption. Can you please have Taylor Gondi to 1340, please? Sure. A natural log, or log base E, I'm going to just teach you something for a second. So if I say that ln x equals y, this is the same thing as saying E to the y equals x. There's like a little invisible base here. Normally we write a base of a log, right? You're used to writing log base 2 of 8 equals 3. You have a base. This base to this power equals this. You make a little circle. 2 to the third equals 8, right? So anyway, here when you have a natural log, we don't write the base. Write ln log natural because he was... French, right? And we put the adjective after the noun, right? Okay. Yeah. You. So, so anyway, forward. yes. So cosmopolitan, that's my SAT vocab would suggest. Uh, yes, yes. Okay. So anyway, there's an invisible <laughs> E here. If you write it, it's not a, you know, it's not a problem. Or you can write the E if you don't, if you don't <coughs> want to just write Ellen. But uh, anyway, there's an invisible E here. So this base to this power equals this. E to the Y equals X. So when I write y equals ln x, that's the same as writing e to the y equals x. Now I have a question. E, e is a number, right? It's an actual positive number. Can I take a positive number, raise it to any power, and make it negative? Um, no. no. Let's say, let's pretend it's 3. Okay, maybe. So 3 to any positive number, obviously, is positive, right? What's 3 squared? 9, right? 3 to the third, 27, right? We're going to get a positive value. What's 3 to the negative first? It's 1 third. It's 1 over 3, right? What's 3 to the negative second? 1 over 9. 1 over 9. Oh, yeah. Right? 3 to the negative third, 1 over 27. So when you have a negative power, it just means take the reciprocal. It doesn't mean make it negative. So any positive number to any power can never be made negative. Could it be made to be zero? Yeah. Could I take three, raise it to a power, and make it zero? Yeah. What power? I don't know. No power. Zero. No. Three to the zero. What is three to the zero? One. One. Zero one. Three to the zero minus one is going to be Yeah, but could I just make just three with just a power and uh, make it no. zero? No, there's no way. So what happens is when you graph y equals natural log x, the x value can never be 0 or negative because a positive number to any power can never equal 0 or negative. So what happens is you have a vertical asymptote at 0 and then the function just kind of approaches negative infinity as x approaches that asymptote and then it just kind of goes up like this. <coughs> It resembles the growth of a square root function. It's not the same. It's actually a little even shallower than a square root function. There is no horizontal asymptote. It never flattens out. It always grows. It just grows really slow. Really slow. Okay? So that's our graph. We're going to use this graph to determine a few things. All right? Um, just for fun, let's see how much you remember. No, you can't do that. I can, and I am. I don't remember how to take a limit. Retweet. I remember the joke. 
that was like, first semester. What's an electrician's favorite place to shoot? Aren't we still in first semester? No. <laughs> no. Just Waffle House? We're in like oh, an electrician, bro. No, no. That out of the box. All right. Did you know, do you know what a TJ's costume is? Okay, guys, here's what I want you to do. In your groups, I want you to look at the graph. Look at the graph and use the graph to find the values of these four limits. So we have the limit is zero, or is x approaches zero from the right, from the left, then just x approaching zero, and x approaching infinity. All for that graph. I want you to use the graph and see if you can find these four limits. Shouldn't take you more than 30 seconds. Once you have it written down. 40 seconds. Do we have a final class that will be covered in here? It's going to be hard if it's not covered. Bam, done. Checkmate. Can I get a drink of water? Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's a great big does not exist. Oh, I thought we had explained it. What about the limit as x approaches zero? Does not exist because it's not the same from the left and the right, right? What about the limit as x approaches infinity? It's infinity, right? As x goes towards infinity, y goes towards infinity. Just slow. Right? Just really slow, right? So, uh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm kind of thinking, just so you know how slow it goes, if you think of an exponential graph, like say I graphed 3 to the x, so we'd have, um, if x was 2, we'd have 9, if x was 3, we'd have 27, if x was 4, we'd have 81, right? The nat a log is the inverse of that, so if x was 27, we'd be at 3. If x was 81, we'd be at 4, right? It's like the inverse of the exponential. Okay. 243, it'd be, we'd have to go all the way up to x equals 243 just to get to y equals 5. Does that make sense? So it grows, and it will get to infinity, but it's just going to take a really long time to get there. Okay. All right, good. Let's talk about some little properties of this graph. So just looking at this graph, Tell me anything that you notice about the graph. It's black. Okay, besides the fact that the color of the ink is black. All right, what else? It uh, increases as concave down. It's always increasing, right? It's also concave down. Always increasing. It's always concave down. It's always concave down. <coughs> hey, can anyone tell me the domain of this function from this graph? <laughs> Zero to infinity. How about the range? Negative infinity to infinity. All right. So I was trying to explain to you earlier. 
that the argument of a logarithm has to always be positive. If you look at the graph, your x is your input. The input of the log function has to be positive, or the log just goes eh. So the input, the argument, which is just another way of saying the input of a logarithm, must be positive. So because of this, when you're asked for the domain, so for example, if I said find the domain of y equals ln x minus 5, <coughs> alright, well, the <coughs> argument or the input the thing that we're taking the log of is what? X. Y. Ooh, L. <laughs> if I said y equals square root of x minus 5, what would you be taking the square root of? X minus 5. X minus 5, right? What are we taking the log of? X minus 5. That's the argument. All right? It's the stuff we're taking the log of. Okay? That's the input for the function. So that stuff has to be positive. In order for that argument to be positive, then x has to be greater than 5. Five. Right? Just solve the inequality. Okay? So the domain for this function is 5 to infinity. x is greater than 5. Alright. I want you guys to try this. I want you to find, do a ditto problem. Find the domain of y equals the natural log of 3 minus 2x. Everyone take a second. You can work in your groups. What? You still granola? But you still crunch crunch? Yeah, no one's not this summer. I got into the yeah. water. Oh God, I have a skin infection. Oh, what's your name? Still, that's the nastiest one. Well, I'm going to get to the Okay. I like you know it would help? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so tell me what to write in order to find this domain. 3 minus 2x is greater than 0. 3 minus 2x has to be greater than 0. Now, there's a couple ways to solve an inequality. Personally, I like to add the 2x and put that over here and keep my leading coefficient positive. But if you subtracted the 3, totally fine. You just have to be very careful. Flip your sign. Uh-huh. Because when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to move the alligator's mouth in the other direction, right? Is this a salt water environment we're dealing with? Okay. So we have our domain for this function is actually negative infinity to 3 halves. Does that make sense? Have you carved pumpkins this year? We have not carved pumpkins yet. We probably, probably will though. What are you going to carve them? Probably maybe on Friday. No, I said what? A what? Or maybe Thursday. You know what you should do? Thursday. While you're fun, like you kids are having like so, so much fun, Friday. you should be carving your pumpkins into something calculus rated. Do you know, I we did the pumpkin pie one once. That was cute. Oh. You know where you put a pie symbol in? You like a lot more of the graphs, then right. you can bring it in to teach us. Um, 
I should mention, since I'm on video wearing this sweatshirt, this is my Michigan State sweatshirt. This is Michigan actually State? the sweatshirt that I bought my freshman year at Michigan State. This sweatshirt was purchased back in... 1989? Close! 1988. Yeah. So yeah. did you not put on yeah. the freshman 15? So, did you just okay. like fight it off, Ms. Price? It's a sweatshirt. You can always wear a sweatshirt. No, you can't. <laughs> Some people put on an auto weight, Ms. Price. Properties! I've been here for 30, 40 years. I don't know. Okay, properties of logs. By the way, what is the base of a natural log? We've talked about it, but <coughs> close. E. Now, here's the thing. Base 10 is the base of a common log, right? We call, we call base 10, uh, the log base 10, a common log because our number system is in base 10, right? Not all number systems historically have been in base 10, right? And if you do any pro uh, programming, you use base two. 2, right, all the time. So if you wanted to travel to ancient Babylon, you would use base 12. 60, right? Um, yeah, which is where all of our time comes from, right? Our time is in base 60. Uh, anyway. Tower of Babel, that's such an intense story. Anyway, that's why we all speak different languages. But log base 10 is called the common log because that's the base that we use. However, everything in calculus. Guys, stop waiting for me to pause and then. Sorry. Okay. Everything in calculus is in base E because base E is the natural log base. Why is it called the natural log base? Because E is the base for all natural exponential growth and decay, right? If you set a group of bacteria and let them go to town for a day, right, you rated, like calculated the rate of their growth, it would be a base of E, right? Some function with a base E. So the natural rate of all, of all exponential growth and decay always occurs with a base of E. So base E is what all of our logs are going to be done in. And when we take our derivatives, even when we differentiate logs that are not base E, we're just going to convert them to base E. So everything in calculus is base E. And actually, similarly, everything in trig is going to be in radians because those are the natural angle, right? So anyway. All right, so properties of logs. So base E, does everyone know what E is? 1.2, 2.1 something, I don't know. 2.4 something. Yeah, we're right now. Okay. E, am I in the Wait, 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 wait. She's about to figure it out. No, we're not. Maybe. It's 2.718281828. Yeah, and it looks like it repeats, doesn't it? It does. But it doesn't. Yeah. So you, I never write the continuing 1828 because then it implies that it repeats, but it doesn't. E is actually an irrational number, meaning it will never terminate, it will never repeat. And it's around 2.7. So pi is around 3.1, E is around 2.7. Isn't it funny that both of our numbers with letters are around 3? Right? So if you ever have to approximate with E, use 3. They rhyme, right? E is near 3. How did they find the golden ratio? Okay. E is actually the limit. E is the limit as x approaches infinity <coughs> of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. So if you were to plug in increasingly large values for x, the higher you go, the, the closer you approximate e. So you just add, the higher you go, the more digits you add for e. Right. So anyway, E is the limit as x approaches infinity of this. So if you plug in 1, what happens? 1 plus 1. Two. That's just 2. Yeah. You just get 2. That's pretty far two. off. Yeah. yeah. But then you just, you just keep going. So anyway, so yeah, that's E. E is calculated from that. But E, that. we just use E, know that E is approximately 2.7 or around 3. Okay. E is around 3. But it's a number. So like, hey, guys, just for fun, I didn't ask this the first period, but just for fun, Suppose they said, hey, y equals e squared. What's y prime? 2e. Uh -huh. 2e to the first. What? Oh, e is a constant. E is a constant. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that's it. Right? E yeah. is a constant. It is not a variable. 
It's like pi, right? It's not a variable, it's a constant. Don't confuse it with a variable. Okay? All right, so here's our properties, properties of logs. First property, uh, the natural log of 1. What I want you to think about whenever you're doing natural logs is I want you to make this invisible circle in your mind. All right? I want you to think, what's, what number is here that's invisible? What's the base? E. E, e to what power equals 1? Think e to what power zero. equals zero. 1? Zero. The natural log of 1 is 0 because e to the 0 is 1. All right? The number out here is always an exponent. It's always the exponent on e for natural log. So e to this power equals this. You're going to really need to know that well. You're going to need to know it well because you're going to have to do things like find zeros of functions and make sign lines with logs and all kinds of stuff, right? So it's really important that you learn how to read a logarithm by thinking to yourself, e to this power equals this. All right, so second property. What's the natural log of e? Uh, one. Bang. Bang. Why is it one? Because e, to the, e one. to the one is e. Because e to the first is e. Duh. Can I trick you? This isn't really a property, but let's do it just for fun. Just for fun. Well, she can't one. trick Jacob. Jacob, what's the answer? Zero. <laughs> two. Constant two. E. 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 Two. E. It's two. just it's two. It's, it's E. Right? No, 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 it's not. Oh. Because e to the second equals e to the second. What do you think that would be? Three. You're right. Yeah, the five. You only asked the questions that you already knew this. All right, so anyway, so that was, this isn't really a property, it's just for fun. But anyway, let's move on with properties. So properties of logs. Here's the big one. This is like one of the most important that you can learn. When you multiply the arguments together, anyone know what you do with the logs, how you can split this up? Yeah, add you add the logs. Now I want you to think, remember that a logarithm is really just like a great big exponent. Right? Remember, look at this log. This whole ln1 equals the exponent, right? This ln e equals the exponent. These are equal to the exponent. So if you remember, like if I said, hey, What's x squared times x to the fifth? What do you do with your exponents? Add. You add them, right? Think of it as like I'm adding my exponents. I'm multiplying my arguments. I add my exponents. The properties are very similar. They're closely related. So remember, when we're multiplying the arguments, we add the logarithms. It's like adding your exponents. OK, similarly, when we are dividing the arguments, You subtract them. You subtract them. Ln A minus Ln B. When I raise an e something with an exponent to another exponent, what do I do with those exponents? Multiply. I multiply them, right? Well, when I have an argument, And that argument is raised to an exponent. Anyone know what I can do with that n, that okay, exponent? You can bring it down. I can put it in front. And think of it as I have something to an x, an x, something to an exponent to an exponent. I'm multiplying my exponents. This is an exponent. This is an exponent. I'm multiplying my exponents. But if you want to just think of it as you can take that power and put it out front, that's fine. Okie doke. All right. You know, in some cultures, you have to cover your mouth when you chew. That's very thoughtful. <laughs> Not in America, though. Oh, okay. okay. All right, there are some gotchas. Oh, like that game, basketball, gotcha. I suck at that game. There are some things that students often do that they shouldn't. So we're going to write them down right now just to see if I can keep you from doing these common mistakes. I bet you won't. Well, I'm going to try. Gotchas. Here are the gotchas. Number one gotcha, I see this more than anything else. <coughs> what does 
ln a plus ln b equal? ln, ln of a times b, right? So does the ln of a plus b equal this? Yeah. No. Absolutely not. When you have an, a sum inside of your argument of your log, you can't split it up. You just have to keep it. Okay. Okay? There's no getting rid of it. Sum or difference, they just have to stay. Do you understand that? Okay. All right. Number two mistake. ln of a over the, uh, what does the ln of a over b equal? ln a minus ln a minus ln b. So when you're dividing logs, that is not the same as dividing the arguments. You just have, you're just dividing the logs. What if you have a log within a log? You know what? You're going to see a log in a log tonight in your homework. Oh. You teach us that? No. Would you like me to? No. Yes, please. It only really applies with derivative stuff. So when we get into derivatives. Okay. Yes. You just that yeah, no, that. Just because that we're doing derivatives today. Oh, we are? Yeah. Okay, third gotcha. Um, be very careful. When you have an exponent on the entire logarithm, you cannot put it in front. When can you put that exponent in front? When the exponent is on the argument of the log. Not when it applies to the entire logarithm. And by the way, your book is going to use a, a notation that will probably look unfamiliar to you in this context. Um, if you see, so I'm going to put, by the way, or to use your vernacular. Okay, BTW. By the way, if you see ln with an exponent between the ln and the x, ln squared x, that is another way of writing the whole logarithm squared. Not the argument squared, but the entire logarithm. Do you guys know, remember in trigonometry, you would have like y equals sine squared, right? Yeah. And that was the same thing as writing the entire sine x squared. It's the same thing with logs. So you'll see this notation once in a while. Just know that that's what it means. Okay? All right. Good, good, good. So we have to expand, condense, <coughs> and learn derivatives in the next five minutes. I don't think we can do it. I think we can. I think you are too confident. I I am confident because I know we can. I'm not I'm not the most yeah, capable. I need at least six minutes. <coughs> capable of individuals. Okay. When you are expanding, it means you're breaking the log apart. So when we expand. Natural log of 3e squared. What that means is you want to write this as a sum or difference of logs. Everyone take 10 seconds and see if you can break this up properly. So they multiply it so you add them. No, no, because this will. Oh, 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 you're right. Yeah, I'm just going to wait to see what she writes down. So Why don't you try it? You, you could just cross it out with Mustafa. It's always better to try it yourself first. Mm. What if someone finds out I got it wrong? Then it all yeah. 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 It's about worse. And we're probably just going to like never talk to you again. So can I put the two out front? No. 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 Why not? Yeah, yes, yeah, you can. No, you gotta split it up first, right? You gotta split it's just it up. No, it's not the whole it's argument. It's not three. You gotta split it up Very first. Very good. Okay, this two does not apply to the three, so you can't put it in front of the whole thing because it's not three squared e squared, it's just three e squared. So the two is just with the e. So you have to split it up first. Now, you could recognize that this whole thing just equals two. But if you don't recognize that and you want to put 2 ln e, 
Then ln e equals Then one. you should recognize that natural log e is 1. And you get ln 3 plus 1. Now, does this equal ln 4? No. No, it's not the natural log of quantity 3 plus 1. It's the natural log of 3 plus 1. And I promise you, if we mean Wait, quantity, we'll put parentheses. Yeah, two, two. Oh, two, I'm two sorry. Thank you. Ah. You tripped me up. I had oh, I'm numbers. so, so sorry. Yes, I'm plus two. Now. Oh, goodness. Yeah, don't put, yeah, parentheses are only, never assume parentheses, right? If we mean the whole quantity, we'll put parentheses around it. Otherwise, it's two separate things. All right, condensing means putting it together. When you are condensing logs, you're kind of combining everything into one logarithm. A little rule of thumb, anything that's being subtracted goes to the bottom. Anything that's being added goes to the top. So complicated to write out. Physics says tomorrow. Who's excited? I already took the I test. So now. You know, it's like you could mm -hmm. oh, How do you think you did that? All right. Just for time's sake. <laughs> Logs. The x is positive, so it's a positive log, so the x goes to the top. This log is being subtracted, so the x plus 1 goes to the bottom. That log's being subtracted, so the x minus 1 goes to the bottom. Anything that's added, the argument goes to the top. Any log that's subtracted, the argument goes to the bottom. <coughs> Four. So then if you wanted to clean it up, x plus 1, x minus 1 is x squared minus 1, or you could keep it factored, it doesn't matter. And then the 2 applies to the entire argument, right? See, that, I would have gotten that if you had if I hadn't told you. I know, but the bell's going to ring in two minutes and I have to teach you derivatives. Weather. Derivatives of logs in two minutes. Challenge not accepted. All right. Or challenge denied. I am about to teach you something that makes all other calculus teachers cringe. But we have two minutes more. But I am going to teach it to you anyway. Yay. Yay. Cringe because it's hard or cringe because they don't know how to get it? Cringe because it's really, really poor not notation. Okay. Okay. This is really, really poor notation, but you'll <coughs> learn it really well. Teach us wealthy notation. <laughs> Teach us the uh, notation of the one percent. If y is the natural log of stuff. Stuff. Okay. You see this mathematical term stuff, right? Okay. Then y prime is d stuff over stuff. <laughs> All right. You put the argument on the bottom and you put its derivative on the top. For example, suppose y is the natural log of 3x squared minus 8x plus 2. Then y prime is, you put the argument on the bottom, and you put its derivative on the top. It's not too hard. Fringe. Okay. For a simple function, suppose y is ln x. What is the derivative? You put the argument on the bottom. You put the derivative on the top. The derivative of just ln x is 1 over x. But the derivative of ln stuff is d stuff over stuff, or 1 over stuff d stuff. How are we going to say it? Wait, wait, you're all packing up, but I want to show you one more thing. Suppose y is the natural log of x squared over... Oh, oh no, 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 because otherwise, this is going to be just a nightmare to differentiate, right? So break the log up first. You can keep breaking it up as much as you want, right? You could keep going and say, hey, this is 2 ln x. 
minus one half ln two minus one half three halves ln x, right? And then your y prime is like super easy. It's two times one over x minus zero minus three halves times one over x. Okay, so and that's the how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's from Bristol Myers.